Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I would like to share my final thoughts on the White Mountain Knives exclusive Kaiser Towser Key Mini Button Lock. Long ass name, but that's what this model is. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be pulling this, uh, pulling information off of White Mountain Knives. This knife currently, and this is the mini one, there is a regular size one that costs a little bit more. Uh, but the mini one, unfortunately, it's out of stock right now. And it's been pretty much since I got on the pre-order of this thing um, a little bit ago. So it's $99, essentially a $100 knife uh, with some change and whatnot for shipping in Texas and all that good stuff. Um, let's do some specs here. So overall length of this knife is 7.65. The blade length on this is 3.7, which is a wonderful, wonderful blade length in my opinion. Uh, three and just floating around three in my opinion is all you'll ever need for basic EDC. Um, blade thickness is 0.11. Blade material is 3V. This is freaking sweet. Love 3V. Um, now, I believe that is the only knife that I have of, oh no, actually, no, my, uh, my Demco over here is actually also 3V too. So, uh, I have two knives out of 3V and they're both absolutely wonderful. Great material, for sure. I uh, haven't run into any rusting or corrosion issues with it and the edge retention is just phenomenal. Um, plain edge, satin finish. Uh, I don't like how satin finish looks after using a knife for such a long time but when satin finish is done very well and brand new it is beautiful as is this knife very beautiful uh handle length 4.58 very comfy handle and the material for the handles it's chocolate glacier rich light um this is the only knife that i own with rich light handles and uh I mean, it just feels like any other kind of handle material. I think it's just really visuals. Um, I haven't noticed any like little chipping or scratches because there is this little um, pattern milled into it. Um, it's very soft. It's not too textured, but it offers just the slightest, slightest bit of grip there. Um, and it says for opening method, Thumb stud opening. Now, uh, just kind of curious, where the hell are the thumb studs on this? <laughs> well, um, as you can see, you can't trust everything off of the online retailers' websites, especially on their spec sheet, because um, there are no thumb studs. These are giant freaking holes, um, and they're absolutely welcomed on this channel for sure um i love reverse flicking this this thing is amazing thumb flicking is just as comfortable and this plunge button lock is extremely extremely wonderful as well let's get into a couple size comparisons here start with the spider coves let's do the para two paramilitary two the para three it's definitely more along the size of the pair of three here in handle and uh, it might have the slightest bit more cutting edge definitely a completely different blade shape um, this is a you know sheep's footy worn cliff camel toe whatever the hell you want to call it and this is a leaf shape you know traditional spider co blade profile um, let's do benchmades this is the 940 Osborne and the Bug Out. Um, again, it's going to be more comparable to the smaller knife. Um, it has about the same handle length as all three of them for the most part. Um, and the Bug Out has also a little bit more cutting edge just because of the difference in blade shape. But I will say that the cutting geometry of this knife is extremely, extremely impressive. Now, probably the most relatable knife uh, in my collection is going to be my Demco 8020.5 textured tie, also in 3V. 
and my Civivi Knives Elementum. Now the Elementum is smaller in handle and uh, by the same bit of cutting edge there, just of course the profile. We're gonna keep the Dimco out here for just a second. Uh, the handle, pretty much the same. I will say that they're both just as comfortable. Thickness in the handles and how it feels, the Demco feels significantly thinner. Uh, it's, I mean, the Demco still feels great in the hand, but this Kaiser here, uh, because it's a little bit more hand filling, um, it's just thicker overall, has the steel liners. And if you could see there, my camera will focus, please. Maybe not, I don't know. Well, anyways, there you can see that, uh, yeah, the Kaiser is significantly thicker than my Demco. And while they share essentially the same blade shape, handle length, cutting edge, and opening methods, not disengagement methods, but you know, at least the opening method, um, I will say that that's the most comparable knife for sure. And that, uh, Comparing all these knives out of my collection that I use for comparison, this thing and its cutting performance is unmatched. This has dethroned my previous favorite knife, the uh, Concept Knives Main Street, the full size. The, the full size Main Street was just a huge freaking, well, maybe it wasn't huge, it was definitely a full size knife the giant Warncliffe blade, thumb stud deployment, steel liner lock, um, it's great, great knife. It's actually cheaper than this, um, but that before was the king cardboard destroyer of my collection. Now this, this thing has dethroned that and it has way better ma blade material too. This has uh, 3V and the, uh, Concept Main Street was in 154 cm, I believe. I think it's 154 cm. Um, so yeah, this is this this thing is just way better, honestly. Um, let's get into some of the hardware here. So majority of what we're looking at here is T8. We have T8 for the pivot screw. It's blank back here. I think that's kind of funny. I. I I don't really see too many other people complaining about it, but it's just something that kind of bugs me that the blank side of the pivot screw is on the other side of the knife while you have, you know, the screw there. I wish it could have been flipped around. It's not, not a big deal, really. It's just a per personal, you know, visual preference, really. Uh, TA body screws. This is lefty friendly, which is wonderful because this is definitely a lefty, Lefty friendly knife for sure. Let's see if I can thumb flick that. Oh, oh my thumb gets stuck there. Oh, whatever. But we'll just reverse flick it. And of course, that button lock is very easy to get to for a lefty. They just use their index finger. Um, here, if you're a right handed individual, and that's how the pocket clip comes mounted for the right. What's cool about the pocket clip is I'm sure you notice here on the lefty side, there are three holes. So there's actually uh, two different positions. There is what would be shallow or deep carry. I did move it up to the deep carry holes. Didn't really notice much of a difference. Um, I just left it there just because um, I don't think it offered any tactical advantage or anything like that. Um, don't notice it in the hands. It's very, very simple bent steel pocket clip. T6 screws. It's flat, but it's not recessed to the handles. No big deal. It goes in and the pocket very well. The bill of the clip, it is writing flat there, and there is just enough sticking up off the scale for it to actually, you know, catch onto very common pant material like dickies and jeans, which is I which is what I typically use. And that's really it. Uh, let's get into, I guess, the overall fit and finish of this knife. Uh, I haven't had a Kaiser in a long time. The last Kaiser that I bought, um, crap, I can't remember. I think the last Kaiser that I got was a Latvind Mini, and it was like a Valentine's Day exclusive. Before that, it was the 
mini Doman when Blade HQ had their um, exclusive. So it, it's been a while since I've got a Kaiser. And as I mentioned in my unboxing of this, Kaiser has so many wonderful models that I would literally go broke and I would never be able to save up for some of the nicer knives in my collection because I would literally just have a hundred different freaking Kaisers. Um, when it comes to the designs, the colors, um, what looks like it would, if, it, if a knife looks like it has really good cutting uh, geometry and it looks like it'd be a great performer, there's just so many things that, that the Kaiser Knife Company offers to the hobby and uh, I'm glad this is one that I got on. Uh, doing the pre-order, as I mentioned before in the beginning of this, that there is a large version. Um, I'm sure a lot of people would probably gravitate towards more a large version, but this this is plenty for me. Um, again, mentioning before that that three point one whatever uh, length was, it's perfect. It's really all you need. Um, it feels great in the hands. Whether you're you're down here, there's a little bit of swell right there, and it's comfortable back here. And with this very generous a very comfortable actually uh finger spot here the termination of the edge there is wonderful you're going to get a lot a lot of life out of this and it's going to be cutting very well for a long time now i will say that while 3v has been seeming to be a wonderful cutting material um, i will say that the finish that this blade was done in would not be my preferred finish um coated black washed, um, just silver stone wash. I would have taken that. Um, even bead blasted. I know a lot of people are moving away from bead blasted, but you know what? I would have taken it in this case because um, I just... <sighs> Satin is beautiful, but it's a high maintenance finish, and I just I don't want to be scared of using my knives. And this knife, um, when you pick it up and you're using it, it tells you, keep using me, keep using me, because it is so comfortable. It, you know, it's... It's hand filling. There's nothing sharp about it besides the cutting edge, of course. Um, even the hole for deployment here, it has the slightest chamfer and it's just very, very clean. Uh, minimal billboarding, but typical stuff for Kaiser. You have a little logo there, a 3V blade stamp, Towser K Mini, and Azo, which is the designer. Um, so Kaiser does the same amount of uh, billboarding they do on all their knives. I would prefer if they did a little bit less, but really it's just visuals. It's not affecting anything really. Um, it does cheapen the look of the knife in my opinion though, but this is a, in what I believe to be a, um, a higher end budget knife. Um, on this channel, I believe that below $100 is budget because uh, there are so many things you can get, so many wonderful things that would keep plenty of people extremely happy and content. Um, I believe that once you spend anything over $100, that's when you're really paying for enthusiast element things, whether it's materials, um, just a slightly higher grade of uh, fit and finish and tolerances. And uh, at, after the $100 price point, in my opinion, I really do think you are starting to pay for brand names, um, Spyderco. Benchmade, uh, what else is out there? There's a handful of other companies that, um, yeah, you kind of are paying for the name. Uh, we, we all know We Knife Co., they're becoming more expensive and their fit and finish quality has stayed the same for like the last like three years, honestly. Um, their designs have changed, become a little bit simpler, a little bit safer and cleaner. Um, but that doesn't justify, you know, the significant price jump. Um, but I will say that Kaiser is a company that, while it offers so many different uh, designs, that there is something for everybody within the Kaiser, within the Kaiser company for sure. They have budget stuff. Their Vanguard line. I don't even know if they call it their Vanguard line anymore. Um, the marketing, um, the Vanguard name is just supposed to signify a little bit more budget oriented um and then like regular kaisers would typically have things like titanium maybe some inlays of micarta or carbon fiber we've seen this in the past 
and uh yeah i mean it, this would be awesome if it was done in in textured tie like just imagine for a second just for a second just imagine that this was titanium with this same milling pattern oh oh yeah that'd be great keep the action the same keep the blade the same for all i care but some textured tie um a you know a fold over titanium pocket clip or maybe a actually milled uh schmancier looking pocket clip yeah yeah go for it kaiser go for it i uh i think that this will sell like hotcakes you won't be able to keep it in stock um the Towser k while i have never been able to experience the full size version of it the regular uh blue rich light and liner lock one that was like first ever debuted that was said to have some of the craziest action because it was one of the first like budget oriented knives that had multi-row bearings and it was apparently just wicked absolutely awesome um it still entices me every time i see it to pick it up just to just to check it out and try it but um it's not that easy sometimes just to buy whatever you want so i decided that you know when i saw this and there wasn't even a picture of this at a time when the pre-order was uh, available and you would go on white mountain knives and see like what's new or what's coming up um there wasn't there was the li the listing was posted and it just had a description it said towser k mini button lock chocolate rich light i was like i don't fucking know what rich light is i don't know what chocolate would look like um i don't know if uh if the button lock mechanism is going to be as quality as or feel better than what Civivi had done uh beforehand but i will say that this is one of maybe five button locks i've ever handled and this thing is just sweet it really is um now the only button locks i've handled at this point uh, three Civivis, one Sen Cut, and that's it. Uh, then there's this, of course, and I will say that this definitely feels a little bit better than those. I had hardly any lock stick, and just the, the action overall feels great. The button, it does stick up, but you need to be very deliberate with pushing this down, and it's it's smooth. It doesn't have any texture on it. Um, not really necessary. This This wouldn't really be like a heavy use knife this is more of like a everyday kind of kind of use knife you know it's not hardcore it's not light duty it's very simple very kind of like common use knife nothing crazy about it but it is a highly highly recommendable knife once it comes back in stock i will say go for it just buy it um i had maybe one or two complaints about this when i bought it and that might have just been my unit. I noticed that the detent was extremely, extremely light on it. So I actually added a secondary spring. I just took a spring out of a cheap ass little pen, cut it to the same length and threw it in there into the plunge lock. And now it's stiffer. Um, it sounds nicer in my opinion. And you know, you can put a lot of force behind, behind and getting it out beforehand uh, with, a little, with a little flick uh, the blade would just come flying out so i think that that might have just been my unit not a big deal hopefully you guys get one that has a better tuned or would act as the detent because technically button locks don't have detents but um hope you guys get a slightly better one even still with the tiny tiny little issue that i had with this thing it is 110 percent recommendable it's a wonderful knife go get it if you have the opportunity to um, if you aren't a fan of medium knives, just shoot for the big one. It only costs a couple more bucks uh, and just go for it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time and uh, have a great day.